Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Mars Horizon, a brand new game which came out just, what, two days ago now? Uh, by Orch Digital, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, this is a space program management game. There's a lot of similarities to Buzz Aldrin's Space Program Managers, which I think is one of the one of the best games out there on this, and I think this does a really good job as well. I really like the sort of the UI. I love the art style that you see in the mission screens. I think there could be a little bit more challenge, a little bit more danger. We're playing the normal difficulty, and so far, really, we haven't felt a lot of difficulty, but this is part two of our first look or our first impressions. This was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel, uh, so I'm going to jump back into that live stream. I hope you guys do enjoy the video. We are working our way through the tail end of the tutorial in this video, so we've been reading a lot of stuff that comes on the screen based on the tutorial instructions. That'll be a little bit lessened in this video compared to the previous one, uh, but we are still working our way through. We've accomplished the first mission before anybody else getting a test rocket into low Earth orbit, and our next objective will be to be the first uh, nation to put a satellite into orbit, and we'll see if we're able to do that. It is the 1950s currently, and we are invo deep involved in a space race. That's a little bit ahistorical. The Soviets are there, which obviously they should be, but the European Space Agency, the Chinese Space Agency, and the Japanese are all also involved in the space race, which is not so historical. But with that being said, that's enough of me rambling. Let's jump back into the live stream that you're watching here in front of you, and I hope you guys enjoy. In orbit, so we'll need a more advanced vehicle. We'll need to either need to go, we'll need to go down the upper stage and and or I guess we need a booster and an upper stage. So the next booster is gonna be the Vanguard. Uh, replace Explorer with Vanguard. Cancel. Explorer. Oh. Okay, so I guess we can only research one item at a time. Hmm. That's annoying. That'll take two months. Maybe if I, if I get new buildings, then I can, uh, Research multiple things. Okay. I'm not sure. There's a lot of buildings to research. Uh, base. Can I do anything here? HQ and small launch pad. Is there anything more I'd want to build? All this stuff's locked. Don't have any other options to build right now. Might be getting a little bit ahead of myself. So we'll just move to the next month. Alright, explore research is completed. So that's the second check mark here. Sorry, what do I need to do now? Build a mission payload? Nothing's being researched right now. So, test launch is complete. Before you're launching a payload into orbit, it's vital that we test the launch facilities. We've done that. So we're ahead there. The other guys are doing it in a month. I don't know what the white flag means. Does it just mean they're losing or they're surrendering? Artificial satellite is the next mission. We are going to plan it. It's a low-risk mission. Suggested parts, though. It wants me to research boosters for Vanguard and Viking. So that's what we'll do. But we will plan the mission. So we have to pick a payload. So the payload for the mission will be Explorer, which we've already researched, which is the first American satellite, I believe. It's a crappy payload, though. It's only one star out of five. 65% reliability. It also has a mass of 15 kilograms, which matters in terms of our booster's ability to lift it up into space. There's different variants here, so it has available variants can be used for further customize the payload for your current mission. Each variant has strengths and weaknesses compared to the standard version of payload. So there's standard. We can go with comms, which reduces the reliability but improves communication modes, modules. So it's a two-star payload. Doesn't change the cost, it doesn't look like. 
I don't think the original... Did the original Explorer communicate back with Earth? I'm not sure if it did or not. There's also a prototype payload, which reduces payload further, but it drops the payload cost. So it drops reliability from 65 to 50, but it saves us half the cost. So we can launch two of these for every one of these. And then there's a power one, which increases power and build, increases build cost. I'm not sure what the power means it's used in mission tasks to gather resources counteract errors it can provide vital safety net but is not but is always in short supply okay we'll just go with the standard one short range comms module planetary observation so there's two objectives it can achieve in orbit short range comms and payload planetary observation if we do the comms one, we get a level two short range comm. If we go with the prototype, nothing changes, it's just cheaper. And if we go with the power, nothing changes, it's just more expensive. So we'll select the standard payload, I think. Uh, probably multiple streams, Sebastian. We'll see if people seem to enjoy it or whatnot, they'll probably play it more. So far, I'm really, intrigued by this. I will say it does feel a lot like maybe a newer, more polished, more modern uh, variant, uh, a variation of sort of what Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager was trying to do. And I really enjoyed that game. Uh, construction report. Like they do with vehicles, your engineers will deliver a construction report on the payload once it's complete. This can include trade. And I'm sorry, guys. I, I, me reading all of these items out loud may not be the, the best thing to do, but I'm doing it, so... All right, so we can start the construction of the payload. Going to go to solar system. I also need to do some research here. I need to research a new booster and a new upper stage to carry this item into space. It sounds like the booster can carry up to 300 kilograms. The upper stage, meanwhile, can carry up to 15 kilograms, which is the weight of the Viking, so that's good. Its mass is 300 kilograms. It makes me wonder if, if the capacity is 300, but this capacity is 300, or mass is 300. Does that mass include the carrying capacity? I'm not sure. In any event, we need to research it, so it'll take one month to do. Hate the game, not the player. <laughs> Sorry, Sebastian. Do you not like this game, or are you talking about Buzz Aldrin? Uh, the small liquid field rocket designed for launching basic satellites into Earth. Vanguard is complete. Uh, okay, so now we need to research Viking. I don't know why it's giving me a thing it wants to tell me to do. Test launch s atmospheric sampling. It's a great way to supplement your agency's resources, especially as they don't require any further research, just a free mission slot. Each request mission is only available for a set amount of time. So they're requesting that we do some kind of atmospheric testing, a suborbital sounding rocket to measure the effects of solar radiation upon the upper Earth atmosphere. Okay. Well, I can't do it. It's available for... The mission is length is one month. We're already researching another mission though, right? So we already are researching this mission, which will take one more month. So I can't research the new sounding mission, the, the requested mission, uh, because I, I don't have any mission slots available. So we'll wait till the next month. Okay, so our engineers managed to vastly improve the payload scientific instrumentation, yet predict reduced compatibility with the launch vehicle. So reduced launch vi reliability, but increased scientific reward. So we can immediately go into launching this mission. We'll have to design a new launch vehicle. So it's gonna kind of walk us through that, but I, I think we can probably figure it out. So we'll have to pick a booster, which the only booster available to us, okay, fine. I get it active. So there's the only available booster is the Vanguard booster, which we just completed research. 
and that it has to be able to carry the upper stage, meaning its lift capacity must be at least as large as the upper, at least equal to the mass of the upper stage, which, which will be, uh, because the upper stage mass is 300 kilograms. Um, they gain experience levels every time they're used in launch, up to five, so each time you increase your level, you increase your liability. Um, you can see here there's other different boosters, but we have to research all of these before we can use them. So we'll go ahead and use the, the Vanguard booster. We'll go ahead and pick an upper stage now, which the only available upper stage is the Viking. So we'll go with that. Ooh, that looks nifty. Yes. All right, so the booster is the same, is, is sufficiently uh, strong enough to lift the Viking stage capacity of 300 where the other one can lift up to 300 so we'll select the part there it is valid for earth orbit and we can confirm the design we can also name the booster by the way so we could name it uh, the Sebastian So it's going to take two months and 100k to build. We'll go ahead and do that. 50% expected reliability. We'll build it. Go to solar system. Meanwhile, if we go to research now, we can research more stuff. Um, we're not researching anything right now. I think the next mission is going to be either lunar. Do we really jump straight to lunar orbit? Huh. What's the, it's going to be complete artificial satellite mission is the next tutorial mission. So do I want to do that? Or would I want to go, I'm guessing it's just like a probe that you send around the moon. Or do we want to go sending animals in space? Or do I have, well, I already have one mission, so I can't. I don't think I can research a new mission right now. Let's just do a new vehicle uh, that has a little bit better booster. So we will go with 1,200 or 1,000. The cost is 130K. I don't have the money for the Jupiter booster. We could go with a, a new upper stage, which would have more mass. 500, 350, or 500. 50K, 100K. So upper stage, Scout. One month, 50K, 1,000 mass, capacity of 500. Why is the upper stage so much, it carries so much more and it's not nearly as heavy? Reliability 40, reliable 60. Oh, it's way less reliable. Got it. Um, so the scout's reliability sucks. And it's cheap. The Jupiter or the Able, the Jupiter carries more weight. It's slightly less uh, slightly less reliable. It can't. They both can go to the moon. It's cheaper. I'll go with the Jupiter. I think that's a nice balancing of expenses there. And I think we'll. I know there's. It says there's one more thing on Earth that it wants me to look at. Did the other guys all complete their missions? So Japan got their second. Looks like China's going to launch today. And that'll put them third. Meanwhile, ESA's completed the research but hasn't even gotten there. The Soviets are planning to do this in a month. Other countries have completed the required research but have not yet scheduled a mission for artificial satellites. I don't know why it says they've completed the research. Like, that seems a little misleading. Or if it has, then they're way ahead of us. Oh, actually. What was I looking at? Ah, where was I? I don't even remember. Okay, so I still don't have any mission slots to do the atmospheric testing. So we'll do one more month. China completed their test launch. One more month. Jupiter research complete. 
I think our mission research is also complete. So the artificial satellite vehicle is completed. Managed to optimize the vehicle's attitude control, which increases launch reliability by 5%. Still not, it's still going to be a dicey proposition at 58% reliability. Payload is 65. The launch itself is 58. Critical failure, 11%. Negative events, 32%. Another uncrewed mission. Looks like November is an optimal launch period, so we'll go ahead and just schedule it right away. Confirm the mission setup. Go to solar system. Soviets completed test launch, their fourth. The ESA is way behind. We also completed the research of the Jupiter upper stage. I'm gonna go, do we wanna go with Jupiter lower stage? Yeah, it's more reliable than the Algol. It is more expensive, substantially so, double the price. Does also cost an extra month to build. Although, but it also carries 200 kilograms more weight. And we need the Jupiter lower stage to carry this because the booster I've already researched, the Algol can't carry anything more than a thousand kilograms and this is 1200. So I've kind of forced my hand. I'll research Jupiter lower stage. My ads are incredibly loud, Barack. I don't think I set the ad volume. We'll go ahead and move to the next month. So we should have a mission coming up here. Optimal date, no training. We don't have training. Ready for launch. It's basically a coin flip here, folks. And it's raining, so bad weather. Again, we're going to have to scrub another launch because I'm not going to launch in rain. Not with our reliability level so low. Sorry, Brock. I don't I don't know who chooses the the volume of the ads, but it ain't me. Let's reschedule the launch. We're ahead of everybody else. I'm not going to blow my rocket up here, so we'll just move it into December. Looks like these guys are still a ways away from uh from the next launch. Houston is a chance of a falling bird poop while raining. <laughs> well, Sebastian, I don't want to blow the rocket up that's named after you. We've got a funding review next month, or in two months also, so if we fail now, that would be bad for business. So let's check out our launch here. Looks like good conditions. It's dark. A nighttime launch, interesting. December 1957. Sebastian, ready for launch. Good conditions gives me 8% plus launch reliability. So we're up to 66% and only really uh, a 9% chance of it like blowing up. 26% uh, chances it succeeds, but there's an error causing damage to the payload. So I imagine that would be okay. It's a low-risk artificial satellite mission, so we'll go ahead and launch. Looks like we're good. Five, four, Let's hold our breath and see three, what happens. Two, one. Well, it's not Houston, Sebastian. Remember, I think we're in Cape Canaveral. We have lift off. I really like the visuals in this game. I like the art style. That little ju jump cut between stages there uh, made me sort of jolt in my seat. I was worried something was happening, but it looks like a secure neutral launch. So we got through the highest risk portion of our mission. So the booster has a success there, gained some reliability, upper stage as well. Now the question is, what about the payload? Its reliability was higher. So you can see it looks like it's in orbit. We did achieve Earth orbit. We collect two comms mission resources. We also collect two data. During mission tasks, you'll need to issue commands to the payload in order to achieve task objective. Okay, I don't know what that means. Current objective is shown here. To successfully complete the task, you need to generate the required resources. So we need to generate two comms. Resources are generated via payload commands. Each command requires a specific output in order to gain 
an output of resources. You'll only have a limited number of commands per turn, so choose each wisely. So we have two commands. Okay. All right, so we have two commands we can give. We need to get two power and two data to succeed in our mission. We get bonuses at three and three. So we get a 50% bonus. Um, so we can go with the signal return relay test. Uh, okay. Looks like we have four power that we can use. So there's a, a limit on how many things we can do. So if I do the visual data collection, I don't quite understand that it looks like the input of two power maybe and two, I, I don't quite understand what this is telling me. I'm, I'm confused, I'm clicking. So it looks like there's, okay, so sorry, I'll undo that. So I've got a, each one of these, there's two different categories. There's power categories, I guess, and then there's um, or communications categories and observation or whatever categories, the, the blue stack versus the, the radio signal. So I can do data transmission, or actually I can't. I can only do signal return test, which will return an output of one of these comms resources. And then I can do any of the, un so if it's red, you can't do it. So I can't do, whoops. I can only do signal return test or visual data collections first. So if I do that, if I do visual data collections, it'll return one of these blue stacks. Then I could do data transmission uh, as well, which would return three of the power outputs, but it would use the, the, the what is this, the data input. So we would gain three comms resources, but we would gain no data. That would be both of our commands for this turn. There's four turns remaining for this mission. Or we could undo that and we could go with the signal return test and then we could go with the magnetic analysis. So this is the input, this is the output. This would give us an output of one data, no signal. We also have a limit of four power available to us. So I think we'll do signal returns and then we'll do atmospheric sampling and spend one of our, two of our power total so that's half our output, but it should get us to the objective for data, the bonus objective for data. So we'll confirm those commands. We'll see what happens here. There's a 75% chance of success, 76% chance completed successfully. Now the atmospheric sampling looks like it achieved success as well. So we gain the three data. So now we have three data and we have three turns remaining. A turn is completed each time all your previously selected commands have been attempted. Make sure to complete the task objective before the turns run out. Recharge power can be selected instead of a normal command to generate power. So we have a limit of four power in the unit, but we can spend one of our commands to re recharge that power and gain power back. Right now we have two power left. So we can spend one of our data here to do a data transmission and spend one power. Then we can also choose to um, spend one more of those magnetic field analyses uh, to get one more data back. And that will get us to two and three. Or we can drop that and we can do recharge power and we'll have three comms and two data with two turns remaining. So that's what I'll do here. Again, there's a chance of failure each time we do this. You can see a 35% chance of failure. This one was actually a very successful, so we got into the 10% positive outcome. So it gives us an ideal alignment, which gives us a bonus, gives us four comms, uh, which is even better because now we have one extra comm to spend uh, on the uh, next mission to get us to our 50% bonus. Okay. So we recharged the power to get us back to two. Now we can spend one of these comms expense and uh, hopefully get up to three and three if we succeed. If not, we've got one turn remaining and we'll worry about it then. So I'm only gonna do, I guess we'll recharge for our second command uh, for that second half there. And we failed there. So we did fail on one of these. Um, 
camera shutter failure. An electrical malfunction in the cameras resulted in reduced data generation. The command output will be reduced by one unless you spend one power to resist the event. So I will spend one power to resist the event since we did electrically recharge the uh, the mission there. And it looks like we reached both bonus objectives with still one turn remaining, and so it's a successful mission, I suppose. So we gain 100, 220 plus thumbs up, plus 375 science for two months. Which is good, because we get the thumbs up right before we go to a funding review. With my artificial satellite safely in orbit, you've earned, achieved a major milestone for your agency and opened the door to launching more complex payloads, perhaps even those that could carry humans into space. Through such formidable challenges, it's crucial your mission staff receive the right training. This can be of great benefit to a mission increasing key stats such as whatever this wrench thing is, and research. Construction, constructing the appropriate buildings in your base will unlock new avenues of training, research lab, rocket test pad, and the spacecraft assembly. Okay. So it looks like we need to build one of those new facilities. We also want to build a mission control and complete a request mission. Meanwhile, we are first with a test launch. We are first with an artificial satellite. We're like half a year ahead of anybody else, which is good, you know? Uh, our support is 500, so I guess I was wrong, that being out of out of, uh, out of of a base of 100. Looks like there's tiers there, so we unlock the next funding tier as long as we're above the 150, which we are comfortably above. And so again, each each I gotta say, each one of these design elements seems very familiar with Buzz Aldrin, except I feel like the way it's presented and done might actually be a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna do the launch atmospheric sampling with our sounding rocket. Since it is a bonus mission we can do, we don't have an immediate uh, need to do you know, another mission at the moment. All the other missions are currently locked. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Only a 40% reliability rate, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it just to try and get a bonus mission, a request mission unlocked. Um, I'm also gonna go into our building here and it wants me to build a new, or sorry, what does it want me to do? It wants me to build one of these. I've got to research them first, don't I? So I've got to research the, the buildings, which means a, a research lab, which will increase the uh, scientific yields from missions. A rocket test pad will allow further, more rigorous vehicle tests, resulting in more reliable launches. Or a spacecraft assembly facility, per, uh, which develops complex mission payloads. I'm going to do the rocket test pad because a rocket blowing up will be less, I less than ideal. Uh, this will... Oh, wait. So we're currently researching something, aren't we? We're still researching Jupiter. That'll finish... Uh, tomorrow? I think. Well, I can pause the research. How long is this? will this take? Three months? Oh, we'll resume that research. We'll just jump forward another month. Funding review. Fears over artificial satellite. Following your agency's launching the first artificial satellite, several foreign newspapers have claimed that satellite represents a global security threat. Japan have requested that your agency re release the full specifications of Explorer payload to prove, to prove its scientific purpose and quell public anxiety. Your advisors believe agreeing to the request will improve your reputation with Japan, though the latter will gain scientific information from it. I'm not too worried. You know, we've got a neutral relationship with Japan. I'm not too worried about sharing research with Japan. So I'll, I'll share the specifications with Japan. They gain 25 reputation, but they also gain science from us. Okay, budget review. Your agency's performance over the last 12 months is reviewed, and your budget been, has been adjusted accordingly. So we actually jump up two tiers from budget, and that goes to 105000 per month. Um, the next tier is 131 per month. So it looks like we get them researched every um, every month, or every, sorry, every year. Okay, so we finished researching the Jupiter launch. So now we need to go ahead and research the, uh, okay. All right, so we need to research the next either rocket or mission. It wants us to research, or, or sorry, building. So probably rocket test pad. Uh, to increase reliability of our rockets. I don't want rockets blown up, even though it might be pretty and fun on stream.
Hey, T Funk Era. How you doing? Hope you're having a nice one. Okay, so we're researching that. Meanwhile, we're going to be doing the sounding rocket launch today. Looks like we have a second requested mission here. So at ionospheric measurements would be in the next one. So this would require putting a satellite into, into orbit. We'd get substantially more science and thumbs up from it. But we're already in the process of doing the atmospheric sampling, so I guess we might as well continue that. Okay, so we finished the test uh, pad, whatever. We're going to go ahead and launch the uh, sounding rocket. Pick a launch day. Looks like our next launch window isn't until June, so we'll have to wait three months for that. I don't want to take a risk at a suboptimal launch window. Meanwhile, it wants me to build a rocket test pad for 100K. I can put it... It doesn't look like there's really negative results to putting it anywhere. As long as we put it adjacent to our rocket pad or to our hangar, we get positive stuff. It's cheapest to put it here. It's 100K. It gives me plus one launch reliability if I put it right next to the assembly building, so we'll do that. Actually, the nice thing is with the delay in our launch, it should uh, spark a more reliable sounding rocket launch. Okay. You know, we're going to research. We finished researching the rocket test pad. We've already researched the Jupiter booster. Probably start researching either a mission animal in space or lunar orbit. You know, why don't we do spacecraft assembly? I'm trying to build the foundations of a strong uh, space program. Animal in space we'll do next. SpaceX research, uh, AJ's are? Not, not yet. Mission operations. Wants me to build one of these while well, I am building it. So we'll move forward to the next month. Radiation belts discovered. Data from your recent artificial satellite mission has confirmed the belts of trapped radiation surrounding the Earth, shielding the planet from the sun's cosmic rays. Gain 200 science. Nice. So the spacecraft assembly facility research is complete. I wonder if that's because of, if it completed early because we got uh, that 200 sci science bonus. I thought it was supposed to take three months. Or no, that's the build time, not the research time. The research time is just based off of how much science you have. We can do mission control, which unlocks one mission slot, which would be nice. Or a backup power generator, 20% payload build cost reduction. Um, or we can research more rockets or more missions. Let's research animal in space. Not sure we have a rocket that can carry an animal into space yet. Meanwhile, building wants me to build more. We can do the spacecraft assembly facility. So I can put it here, plus three vehicle. Ooh. Oh, yes. Look at this. Plus all around. So if I put it here, we get th vehicle build time. If I put it here, we get vehicle build time and, uh, and vehicle cost. If I put it in this corner, I get vehicle build cost, payload reliability, and vehicle build time. That's a nice little... Uh... So this is 2% vehicle build time. Here we get one or... Yeah, we'll do that. Costs a little bit more money to clear that terrain as we're starting to expand our facility into the woods there, but good result. Okay. All right, looks like everybody else is still three months away from the nearest launch for the artificial satellite. The ESA hasn't even done their first test launch of a sounding rocket. Dear God, they're so far behind. All right, and on that note, we're going to wrap this episode up. We got our first satellite into space ahead of anybody else, and it uh, looks like we're winning the space race right now. Our next objective will obviously be to get an animal into space as we make our move on eventually becoming the first to get a human into space. 
But that's where we stand at the end of episode number two. I hope you guys enjoyed this series, uh, or sorry, this episode. I hope you enjoy this series. Leave your thoughts down below. And uh, as always, guys, this is The Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.